I grew up in Dubai. This is my proof. It's appalling quality, but it is actually me. I moved there when I was nine years old, and I loved it. It was this huge, over-the-top city, and it was so exciting. And I'm from down the road, I'm from Portsmouth, and this kind of thing just didn't really happen every day. And we used to come back to England on a holiday once or twice a year. And I remember once I was about 14 years old, and I was talking with some friends about life and what I'd been up to, and I mentioned that I'd recently been in a car accident. And they looked worried, and they were like, oh, what happened? And I said, well, actually, this, this, this is nothing unusual for us. This happens all the time. I've been in about a dozen or so since I'd moved there. And they looked at me like I was insane. And so I told them the story and how we were driving down the road one day, and this huge fancy car with tinted windows drove past and knocked us off the road and just kept going. And I said, again, this is, this is normal. This happens all the time. And it's our fault. It's not our fault. It, it was the driver's fault. But this driver was very rich, very powerful, and local to Dubai. So nothing would ever come of it. You don't even bother going to the police. You don't bother reporting it. And they continued to look at me like I was mad. And then I realized maybe they were right. Maybe this wasn't normal. I'd sort of adapted to this situation, to this, to this lifestyle. And so I started to sort of scratch the veneer of Dubai and look behind it a bit more. And I was in that angsty teenage phase and I wanted to rebel against everything. And then realized that maybe I, I did actually have a, a good reason to rebel. I realized that I couldn't make a difference. And my mum couldn't make a difference, and my dad couldn't make a difference. And in fact, nobody we knew could make a difference. People who had moved there and people who were already from there, nobody could make a difference because there was no democracy. People couldn't vote. People didn't have a chance to, to have a say, except for the very few rich, powerful people in charge. And so when I turned 16, for this reason and for so many others, we left and we moved from Dubai to Brighton. Yeah, the pretty different places. And I loved it, and it was this amazing liberal city, and I got to voice my opinion more. And I would talk to friends all the time, and I'd be like, I can't wait to turn 18. And they'd be like, yeah, drinking. And I was like, yeah, but voting. <laughs> they, this is something that I was really interested in, and I wanted to hear other people's opinions about it. And, and some people were engaged, but. On the whole, everybody was really apathetic. And the phrases that kept getting repeated over and over and over again were, well, one vote won't make a difference, so why should I bother? And you're just voting for the lesser of two evils, so I don't, I don't really care who's going to run the country. It's not going to make a difference in my life. And this made me really sad, but at the same time, I did turn 18, and I, it was a lot about drinking. And <laughs> as I grew up and I went to university in Brighton, and you have those sort of long nights and those philosophical and political debates and you're going to change the world and you're going to save everything. And it sort of all went to the back of my mind. And then one day, 2013, last year of uni, I was talking with my friend Joe and he says he's part of this really cool project run by Community 21, their young digital citizenship program. And it's about getting young people engaged in town planning using digital technology. And I was like, oh, that's, 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 that's pretty awesome. That's a really cool thing to be involved in. And so he's doing research for this project, and he stumbles across this tiny little game called Minecraft. <laughs> he hadn't heard of it before, but anybody with parents or who's even met a child will know what Minecraft is. And he decides to, to implement that into the program and to use that to engage kids. So I start working with him, and the university inform us they're going to bring in a group of kids from Lewis, which is a town just up the road, and that we get to run sessions with them using Minecraft. So we spend weeks and months recreating Lewis within the game. We bring the kids in, and we get them to, to finish it off, to continue building Lewis. And they love it, because they're like, oh, there's Waitrose, oh, there's Costa, I know these places. And they're not going to complain. They have two days playing Minecraft. And then at the end of it, we realize that we've maybe missed a little bit of a trick here. And then with uh, a PhD student, Kelly Dugan, and some other people who are part of the project, we decided to bring them back in again over Easter 2014. And, but this time, we were going to listen to what they wanted and their opinions. There's an area in Lewis called the Phoenix Industrial Estate, and that's currently up for redevelopment. 
So we thought we'd bring the kids in, we'd have a town planning meeting, and we'd sit with them and talk about what it is that they liked and disliked about the area. And they said that it was really dark, it was really scary, it wasn't family friendly. They got judged a lot for being kids, for going around skateboarding and wearing hoodies, and they sort of had this stigma around them that they didn't like, and they wanted to change the whole area. So we split them into teams, and we started to get them to decide what it is that they wanted, and yeah, they wanted cinemas and, and skate parks and all this other stuff. And then this 11-year-old kid turned to us, and I'm not joking, and he said, we need to stop being so reliant on fossil fuels and start focusing on green energy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's not what I was thinking when I was 11. And so they went on and they started to design it, and they, started to, they made this. This is a bird's eye view of, of what they did in Minecraft. And so there's a big green family area, a big park where there's no alcohol allowed, there's no smoking, no antisocial behavior, all this kind of stuff. There's only one road in, the rest is pedestrianized. They did wind turbines, a greenhouse for everyone to use, allotments. They did an anaerobic digester. Um, they called it a poo farm, but you know, the idea was there. <laughs> this is what they created, they created something really amazing. And so Joe and I took this and got it 3D printed. And this is something that we started to show people, we started to show adults, and we went to the Lewis Society Fair and started to put these, these plans forward to see if they could actually become real. And adults would look at this and they'd understand it and they could pick it up, it was something that existed and they could see that this, this could happen. But they were always shocked when we said that kids did this, and these were kids between, between eight and up to 13, and they, they couldn't believe that this is the stuff that, that they had created. So from here, we thought that this would be something that this would be a good project to sort of bring into the community and, and try and actually make a difference with. So after graduating, we decided to do this full time. And that's what we do now. We, we, we do block builders. We bring in kids for sessions and we get them to plan their local area, places like London Road and things like that that are being redeveloped and that are changing. What we've realized is that these kids they're experts in this, this is their world. They are so engaged already within Minecraft. And that by using that, we can actually reach them, we can actually get them to make a difference, and then convert it into a 3D printed architectural model that adults look at and go, oh, so kids aren't just on this, this silly game, wasting time and blowing each other up. They are, <laughs> but that's not all they're doing. That this can be used to actually create some kind of change. I became engaged in my society and community. I wanted to make a difference because I'd had that right taken away from me. I wasn't able to do it from a young age. I didn't have that choice. That's not how it should be. People should, should want to make a difference because they can. So we feel that if you can use digital technology to reach these kids at a young age, they'll grow up wanting to make a difference because they actually can. Thank you.